Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Stephen Roth and I'm a board certified oral and maxillofacial pathologist. Today, I'll be showing you gross examination and processing of a cancer surgical specimen from a very small cancer on the side of the tongue. But first, we have to get into that disclaimer, and that is that all opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone, and do not represent any organization that may employ me or that I may belong to, and that this video is for educational purposes only and should not serve as medical advice. Should you have any questions or concerns about your oral or systemic health, please see your nearest oral or systemic health care provider. An additional trigger warning for this video, this video features the handling of a specimen from a small tongue resection and may be uncomfortable for some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Before watching today's video, I strongly suggest that you watch my oral cancer reporting video, which I have linked in the description below. Today's video relies on some basic knowledge as to how and why cancer operations are performed, in addition to how we process specimen from those operations. So I'll give you a second to pause this video, watch that one, then come back to this timestamp. Go ahead, I'll, I'll wait. Did you watch it? Okay, good. Welcome back. Here is an inside look at how we actually handled a partial glossectomy specimen of a very small biopsy-proven squamous cell carcinoma. So here you can see our surgical specimen, and we're going to measure it in three dimensions, length, width, and height. The side that is facing up is the epithelial side, the surface side, and that blue circle represents the surgeon's outline of the cancer. After we've measured the entire specimen, we're going to measure the area of concern, the area of cancer on that surgical specimen. This is incredibly important for our synoptic summary. You can appreciate that the surgeon has left in some sutures for us, and that's to give us a guide. We know that the long suture is anterior and the short suture is superior. That's thanks to the surgeon leaving them behind to kind of give us a map. We can't process that with the specimen and we need to know what side the tissue is from, so we use different colored inks to label the different colored sides. Here you can see that we're applying green ink to the area of the long suture, which, which represents anterior. We apply a different colored ink to different sides, and this ink will be applied to the gross specimen, but it will show up under the microscope. And that way, if we see the colored ink when we're looking at the slide under the microscope, we know that we truly have the end of the surface. If the slide gets cut at an off angle or tangentially, we may not see the ink and therefore it's not the true specimen margin. Here we have blue going on opposite to the long suture, so this is the posterior specimen. The darker colors uh, don't show up very well under this lighting, but under the light in person, we can definitely tell that there's a difference. This is violet going on, and it's gonna look very similar to blue under this light, but under the microscope, we'll be able to tell the difference between blue and, and violet and black. So this is the last of our circumferential margins that we're labeling now, opposite of the short suture. So this is the inferior. And the last margin that we mark is the deep margin. So that's the margin at the bottom of the specimen. It's really important to clean the forceps uh, between each color. You don't want the colors to bleed. So we do this very carefully and precisely, especially in a small specimen like this, where we wanna make sure that we're labeling it correctly. We don't wanna make a mess with our ink. So we do blot it to dry it. This is the final result. And then once it's labeled, we don't need the sutures anymore and we don't wanna process the specimen with the sutures in. So we do uh, get rid of the sutures by cutting them at the knot, being careful not to cut the specimen.
And then we use a setting spray here and this will make sure the ink stays on the specimen. We flip the specimen over so that we can see the cancer. And then we want to make perpendicular sections uh, on two of the ends. And perpendicular sections are sections that include the margin and the cancer. This way we can measure the distance of the cancer to that specific margin. So we took it from one side and then we're going to take it from the opposite side because we want to figure out the closest margin under the microscope and measure it. And we do this kind of by eyeballing. So we, we see where it is closest. Now on a small specimen, it's a little bit easier, but on a larger specimen, we go where we think it is closest, or we take a few perpendicular sections that go from the margin to the malignancy. This one's being a little stubborn, so I had to go back in and release it, which I do. So we have our margin uh, in two directions, from the cancer to the closest margin. And now what I'm going to do is serially section, which means section from one end to the other in three pieces. I paused the video here uh, so that you can appreciate that I have sectioned it in, the, uh, in a certain plane. And the two margins that we didn't take perpendicular sections from, so not the, the first two pieces that I cut, will show up in these sections. So the perpendicular sections or the distance from the cancer to the margin will show up in these serial sections and we've submitted the entire specimen so we can look at all of it under the microscope. We don't always submit the entire specimen. Sometimes we only submit representative tissue, uh, but in a small specimen like this, I usually just submit the entire specimen. There you have it, a real life look at how we perform gross examination and processing for a small cancer resection specimen. I apologize for some of the camera work on this video. Uh, it was a little impromptu and we don't have a rig set up for steady cam work. If you like this video and wanna see more complex specimen like those I show on my Instagram page, leave a comment below and I may invest in a rig to capture gross processing of big complex specimen. I wanted to thank my residents, Dr. Elizabeth Knott and Dr. Sarah Franklin for their help engrossing this specimen. Don't forget to leave a like below and subscribe if you haven't already because we are so close to 1,000 subscribers. It's very exciting, so join in the fun. Thanks again for watching and be well.